right anybody has any questions uh with the um, psc or previous classes any classes no okay so i'll tell you what we have right now we have a client uh, app which is react app and we have our backend app okay this is the backend application complete backend application and in total it has around 12 or 13 routes i think so four routes here if you see this three routes here and some routes are here or some four or five routes here some comment route here and this one so i think we have uh, what two three five seven eight eight or nine routes and <clears throat> We are go uh, and then we have some front end routes, right? So our front end routes are going to start with um, our back end routes are going to start with API. Rest of the routes they will be front end routes. So we want that if uh, if you're fetching front end file or something, uh, if you're fetching any other route, then our uh, then our index dot js which is the build which is from the build folder should be um, resolved okay so yesterday i think few folks dropped off uh, early but we built the we built the npm we built the react project with that we get a build folder we copy the contents of the build folder and we put inside uh, static i can change the name to public and also change the name to public here so with this we can uh, we can send any of the file here in this public folder from this middleware okay so i'll tell you uh, now we don't need now we we have developed uh, everything for building we used uh, this uh, we used this env file for production build we used this production uh, env file for development we used uh, this env file right so the uh, the difference between these two files is uh, the api endpoint that we have right <clears throat> so it is important to understand that uh, if i run the if i uh if i serve the static files from my uh, server then you can see that here we are getting uh, this index file but if we go to any mm -hmm. other route like api post like this we get uh, this data okay and so on so with this i think uh, uh, there is a there is a problem that if I reload here, if I go to this route, if I do this, then I'm going to get a blog uh, 404 for this route. So there is one thing that we need to handle. This is one thing we need to handle. Another thing that we need to handle is uh, that this time uh, we should we should change the port number back to. 3000 okay so that uh, our so that our uh, github login works just fine right github login works just fine otherwise uh, it will fail okay so if you log out reload login login with github it is going to lend the user back to this page but this time uh, it is not able to resolve front end uh, this index.html. So if we fix these two problems, everything else is going to be fine. So for that, I'm going to say for all get request, 
and matching this path star means any path i am going to send uh, this index dot html okay so i think uh, we can say um, express dot response dot re, uh, send file right this send file will send uh, the content of the file so i have to give it a path right so i'm just going to say slash uh, public slash index dot html and let me see path must be absolute or specify a specific specify root so in this i can i can pa uh, provide the whole path so i can say under underscore directory name uh, path i'll use this path library from the which is built-in library so path dot join under underscore directory name and then public slash index dot html hopefully this is going to be fine okay so with this i think it's it's going to be fine so if i log out again and if i go to any path and reload then i'm, I'm going to get front okay i'm going to get index file so after after we get index file react is going to start doing its own internal routing mechanism and everything okay so for all non api paths we have to provide this index.html that's it okay if we provide this index.html for all non api paths all api paths anyway are going to are these four routers but all these uh, paths which are not matching anything uh, will go to uh, we will send index.html okay so once we send the index.html if you look at the network request once we uh, send the index file right this is the index.html file hold on yeah if if i reload this is our index.html file right this is format better. Okay, you need to enable JavaScript, and then it fetches this uh, these uh, favicon file, this favicon file, and it fetches this this favicon file, and then it fetches. Uh, logo so logo is coming here this one right it fetches manifest.json this file it fetches uh, this js file this js file and so on okay all the things that are built here in the css and javascript all these are fetched so react will take care of uh, routing to this this blog page okay after after uh, uh, static files are fetched then it will call api endpoints to fetch the contents for that api so because we used uh, because we used slash api so if you look at this all the requests are going to slash api and then for each, each function we have written uh, slash auth slash logged in user and if you look at this slash api slash post so all the api endpoints are nothing but our uh, host name slash api okay that's why we have used slash api here understood why do we want to have static files in backend 
uh we want to serve the the whole uh we want to deploy the whole back end and front end in the same uh, repository from the same repository okay as, as a single application mm -hmm. so uh, right. it it's not like uh, we we will be we will have to deploy these uh, separately you can deploy separately but for us it's better to deploy it as a single application so that uh, i mean deploying as a as two different applications is easier it's not difficult it's uh, it will teach us much more if we try to deploy them as a single application we will get to learn all, all the all these tricks about serving static files and serving uh, dynamic data all these things that's why we are doing it. okay can could you please show non api route logic do you mean this this logic uh okay sorry you want to understand this one yeah so all the routes which are not matching slash api we want to send index.html right so this uh if we if we fetch a specific static file if we fetch any specific static file say i want to fetch slash logo.png then uh then also it i uh, if the file does not exist in this folder then i'm also sending the contents of index.html but if i fetch let's say in logo192.png since the file exists here it is going to serve that specific file for any other endpoint say this endpoint since this does not exist since this this is not matched by any of the <coughs> any of the handler here i will fan, uh, i will uh, send index.html here you in the in in front end you can also have uh, routing for other uh, endpoints right which does not match okay so if you want to handle 404 routes you can handle in front end as well that okay this path, this path does not uh, exist so you can say route path and you can say this path right something like that yeah okay for fallback you can have something like 404 shown on the front end okay this is yes this is sort of a fallback if we don't send any uh, any file then we send uh, index.html and this is to handle these these uh, internal routes so that uh, for these routes as well we are showing we are sending index.html okay clear so with this our application is complete and we are going to uh, commit the changes instead of api slash post it should be a uh, blog slash post no no api uh, is common and we have some post related route post means uh, uh, blog post okay and then we have auth comment user okay cool so then now we are going to start with deployment and we are going to start with uh, cloud providers first right so you may have heard that so first of all once we if we want this application to be available on the internet we need a computer which is connected to internet 24 7 available 24 7 and also accepts internet connection from outside uh, 
outside your local network, right? So, <clears throat> sorry. So we can do that with our computer as well. That's fine. But our computer may not be connected to internet 24 seven. It may not uh, be up all the time. So things like that uh, are going to be problems, right? So we don't, we don't want to take care of hosting ourselves. Instead, we want to use some service providers or cloud providers who will give us a computer, right? We, we, we will have a machine which is connected to internet all the time, right? 24 seven and available for up and running 24-7. Right, we want this. And uh, we can also access, we can also access this machine, right? If we want to uh, copy our files or if we want to host anything that we want to do with that machine, we can do, okay? So we are going to connect with uh, terminal right command line so we are going to be we are going to connect with that machine using our terminal okay so a uh, lot of cloud providers will provide you such machines right so we we have we have heard of aws maybe you have not heard of it but aws is one such cloud provider aws stands for amazon web services then there is Google Cloud provide Google uh, Google Cloud Cloud Project GCP. There is Azure from Microsoft. There is uh, DigitalOcean, and there is Hostinger, Heroku, and so on. There are many more, right? And there are some private. Uh, there are some uh, small parties as well which can give you uh, these servers and yeah but basically the goal is to get a machine which is connected to internet 24 7 up and running and if i show you that uh hold on this background you see right this wallpaper you can see so these uh stacks of machines right these are uh stacks so in these uh, stacks, you can see uh, there are these racks are there. In each rack, we can see multiple uh, these small lights. These are all, all nothing but uh, servers. Okay, these are nothing but uh, CPUs which are running uh, some operating system. Could be Linux, could be Windows, uh, could be Mac OS as well. And there could be other operating systems so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter which operating system we we, we can use any of these yes these are uh, servers and databases these are nothing but cpus so we can use these cpus uh, these cpus could be used for any any purpose we can use them for databases we can use them for file storage you can use them for uh, servers whatever right so these this is called a data center and uh, there is one in Mumbai as well. AWS has one in Mumbai. I think Google Cloud Project also has one in Mumbai. These take a lot of space, right? These take like hectares of land is required to construct these data centers. And uh, people are not really allowed to go in these data centers. Um, they, they are going, they are situated in basements and all that. Some Some companies are working to open data centers under the ocean as well so things like that okay so these data centers are uh, you you can understand that they're always connected to power and they're connected to internet and they're built for people like us engineers who host our applications there and yeah uh, rest of the public can access our websites and applications okay so we are going to use AWS. I'm going to log into my AWS account and I'm going to show you how uh, we are going to host our application there. Okay. Any questions? 
before we can proceed. <laughs> okay so suppose we have a suppose we have a machine what are we going to use uh, we are going to use ssh to connect to this machine from our machine from our laptop we will use ssh to connect to the remote machine okay so we have a remote machine and we have uh, our machine And we will use SSH to connect to the uh, connect to the to that remote machine. SSH stands for Secure uh, Socket Shell. I think. Okay. Secure uh, Socket Shell, and we are going to use uh, H stands not for shell. Let me see. Maybe. Secure shell or secure socket shell also it is called. So it uses uh, it uses unsecure network to secure uh, to communicate securely. Right, this protocol allows secure communication over uh, it uh, unsecure network. Right, so how it does that? So this is our machine, right? This is our machine, and it wants to execute some command on remote machine. Okay, our machine wants to uh, execute. We we want to execute some command on remote machine. So how do we do that? Let's say this command is uh, just uh, cat uh, uh, my file dot txt right something like this so this is a command which is uh, writing this content to this file okay if I run this if I run this here then you will see that in this file Okay, um, I think it has to be other way around. Pipe my file dot txt. Okay, so hmm, maybe something is wrong. So we can do this. So let's say we want combination of commands. Get my file dot txt. And I can pass this and then I can see can press control C. So it will uh, three commands and this content will be pasted in my file. So something like that. We can also take example LS. So we will run this command and whatever is the output, this, this command is supposed to be executed over here. And whatever is the output, whatever is the output, right? should be sent back to our machine so that we can see the output okay so things like that and how it how it does this how it does uh, secure communication over unsecured network so it happens like this maybe uh, it may be useful for you to know some uh, very interesting algorithm so we have let's say This is our this is our local PC and we have our remote PC. If we just send the command directly like this, if we just send uh, some command, okay, so for example, get my file dot txt. <laughs> if we just send the command directly like this to be executed somebody could be uh, somebody could see the content of 
whatever command we are sending let's say we are typing in some password or something like that somebody can uh, if this is this connection is not secure somebody can look at the content of my command or the output of the command that is being sent right so we have output being sent here right so somebody could be looking at uh, what we are sending back and forth so how do we fix this how do we connect securely we cannot make the connection uh, secure this is the assumption that we cannot make the connection secure if we communicate over https or something like that that is by default secure but this is not secure so how do we make uh, this hidden from uh, remote uh, from anybody who's looking uh, at this network right so what happens uh, say uh, this pc is going to log the content of the file by using some some uh, key okay for example uh, if if i signify this as a key so yeah suppose this is a key and i will hide my i will encrypt all the contents of this file right all the contents of this uh, this request using a key and uh, i will send this encrypted thing here okay it will go here now remote pc does not know what are the contents of this file it cannot read the contents because because it is logged so what uh, it is going to do it is going to first uh, so let me group this it is going to take this it is going to put another key another key of its own right uh, it is going to put another key of its own saying that okay i don't understand but uh, i have also put the key on this content okay i have encrypted what you encrypted i have encrypted with my own key now it sends uh, this back to the sender it sends it back to the sender now sender will see okay this is uh, encrypted it is going to now the sender is now going to unencrypt uh, uh, sender is going to uh, decrypt this by using its own key okay so it is going to remove its own key now this file is uh, encrypted only by key which used which was used by remote pc and then it will send it back to the remote pc now remote pc only this this content has only one lock sort of so which is uh, the before which remote pc already has the key okay so it is going to uh, uh decrypt that and it is going to remove this and now it will understand okay this was the content so no uh, nobody in between at any point could see the content of this file right this is how this uh, ssh communication is going to work but we don't have to do all of this this is going to happen for us automatically with the program that we are going to use okay this i found interesting when i read about it that's uh, that's um, so i also wanted you to know about this similarly when the output is transferred this time uh, sender is going to uh, remote pc is going to send the output because it is a socket connection anybody both it is two way any any one of the uh, any one local pc or remote pc could initiate the conver uh, conversion communication non remote pc does not uh, decode our key remote pc does not have uh, uh, lock does not have key to our lock it puts its own lock and sends it back to us then we remove our lock right we remove our lock and then there is only one lock on this which was put by remote pc and then remote pc can unlock this 
with, with its own key. Why lock it? Why encrypt it? So that nobody in between can see the content of the file. This content is supposed to be uh, read only on local PC and remote PC. Okay, that's why we are locking it. It is at least secure uh, in transit, right? That is the whole purpose. In transit, secure in, uh, in transit is the whole purpose. Okay. Clear. Uh, output is also encrypted. You can see that the same thing happens for output. First, the remote PC will put its lock. Then it will go here. Local PC is not going to be able to unlock that. Then local PC is going to put the lock again. Now it will have two locks and it will send the output back to remote PC. Remote PC will remove its own lock and then send it back to local PC. Then the local PC will remove its own lock and understand the output. Okay. Everything, any, any communication is encrypted like this. Okay. So there are at least three uh, times uh, travel. Once when we lock and send, then the, when, then the receiver will lock and send back and then the sender will unlock and send and then receiver will unlock okay <clears throat> this time for output this uh, pc becomes the sender it will send with a uh, locked then we will lock it and send back and then sender will uh, unlock and send and then we will unlock so you can guess this we cannot share the common key because there is no no way to share uh, the key securely right there is no way to share anybody both of these cannot share any key because the connection is not secure and anybody can be looking at the key okay so there is no public common key common public key whatever let's not go into too much detail we also have to do a lot of other things but this idea at least is, is a little bit interesting. So you should know about this. But also it is easy to understand. It is not a rabbit hole. It, it's, a, it's a foolproof uh, mechanism. And it is working very well. Okay. Fine. Uh, so let's start with AWS. We will first begin with uh, getting a machine. And I have a AWS account. So I'm going to log into that. Also, I have to pay my AWS bill. Uh, I'll do that. Yes, yes. You can go into depth much, uh, much more depth. Okay, so this is my AWS account. You can create one. I think you, you're going to need a debit, uh, debit card and it will ask you to transfer one rupee or something which it will give you back but it needs to verify your uh, credit card or debit card so once you create your account you should see a dashboard like this okay one dollar okay not sure but fine whatever if you sign up it will ask you to uh, uh, transfer say one dollar which it will send it back to your account after verification so you can create your own account. Okay. So once you create your own account, you should see a dashboard like this. My, okay. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing about AWS, it is the, the, the moment you create your uh, account, it is eligible for one year. It is eligible for free tier for one year. So this free tier concept is very important and free tier means some, uh, some resources or some services are available for free 
if you if uh, consumption is within limit okay so for example if let's say you want to have uh, your own server and you are under free tier then it would mean something like let's say uh, 720 hours of server running right per month is free it is more than 720 but for example let's say some x hours of server running per month is free so if you are running one server and if your consumption is within those limits then uh, you will not be billed at all there will be zero bill will be zero okay so you can read more about aws free tier here so so i'm just going to show you that if for one year your account will have 750 hours of uh, ec uh, some some machine running right some machine running for 750 hours per month 750 hours is more than 30 days okay so if you leave your uh, server running whole, the whole month it is going to be free for you and for 12 months you will be able to uh, enjoy this okay api hit count or whatever it is not whatever you do on your server does not matter you can constantly keep hitting your server with api counts whatever it it is not counted as consumption okay does that make sense similarly it will give you 5 gb of static storage s3 is static storage so for example you can have images videos pdfs whatever if you have uh, 5 gb of data you will be able to store up to 5 gb of data for 12 months without any charges at all why am i paying yeah that's a good question i'll have to create another account um i don't want to configure uh, things uh i i mean i i am going to create another account which i am going to use for free but yeah i am i i just uh i think it has been two months for me to uh, uh that i am out of free tier but i'll have to create my own another account so that's a long story anyway so uh, i'm going to use uh, ec2 service ec2 is is the name of the service which is used for uh, renting out servers, right? Okay, so we are going to use EC2. If you don't see EC2 here in recently visited, you can also search for EC2 in, in the search box. So basically you want to go to EC2 dashboard to create a server, right? I have my own server running and I told you that i am uh, my port my personal portfolio is also running uh this right? so this this uh, website is running on aws so uh this is running on this machine that i have right this is personal ec2 machine so i'm getting billed for it but i'm going to create a new account and migrate to that but until then i'm going to be billed and my bill I can show you my bill is around ten dollars for each month. So ten dollars is what uh, eight hundred rupees, right? Eight hundred or nine hundred rupees. And what what I tell all of my students is that do not uh, do not hesitate to invest in learning. So you can see most of the people are uh, very very um, non hesitant to spend 900 rupees if they want to go see a movie if they want to go let's say uh, some place right most of the people are not hesitant some people are still uh, still hesitant but most of the people will easily spend 900 rupees on something that uh, they enjoy right as entertainment or something but they will not invest 900 
or thousand or fifteen hundred rupees on something which will help them learn. So, for example, a course to buy a course or to you know uh, rent out a server. So things like that. But we will easily spend nine hundred rupees in a month on our entertainment. So this is something that I like to uh, tell all the students that please don't be hesitant to invest in something which will give you a better uh, uh, you know value which will add value to your life okay apart from uh, my own uh, portfolio i don't use it for anything else i use it for uh, dem showing demo to students every every batch so that's another thing okay so once we come uh, to the instances uh, dashboard EC2 dashboard, right? I clicked on instances. So one instance of server is running. If I show you this server, this is a very simple basic server. It has one GB RAM and it has one CPU core. And uh, yeah, it has its public IP address. I'll tell you all you need to know. You, you're not going to see any uh, server running for you. You will have to create your own, uh, add your own server. So you can go to launch instances uh, uh, form. And <clears throat> this is going on the right side. We are going to see the summary, which is uh, uh, for the server that we are going to get. Okay. There are some default options selected for you already. So don't worry about those. So first, first, first thing that we need to uh, do is we need to fill name. So we are going to say uh, PT web eight B demo. This is the name of the server, right? So number of instances I can create multiple within one attempt. So I just want to create one and application and os image which uh, os i want to use right so it will have it will have multiple options we don't want to use anything fancy we are going to select ubuntu okay <coughs> so i'm going to select ubuntu and under that it is going to ask you which uh, version of ubuntu you want to run so i'm going to select 20.04 LTS, LTS stands for long term support. They will have minor versions, but they are not supported along in long term. So it will always provide you an LTS with LTS. So we are going to use 20.04. And this is fine. Whatever is selected, architecture is fine. We are going to use 64 bit uh, architecture, right? Uh, ARM architecture, we are not going to use. Okay. But with this, you should make sure that there should be option to option of free tier eligible. Okay. Free tier eligible should come. Otherwise, you're going to get billed. So why this free tier is uh, available? Why some of them are available as free tier? Why they are not available as free tier? Because they are uh, used for specific purposes, right? Deep learning. Uh, you can see that some use them for deep learning. Some are uh, configured for better GPU performance. Some are things like that. Okay, we are going to select Ubuntu server. So Ubuntu server is the best one for us with 20.0 for uh, version, right? So free tier eligible. Then we come to instance type. Okay, number of instances one software image uh, canonical Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, this one. <clears throat> instance type is the uh, most important option here. This will tell you how much uh, memory or RAM you want and how many CPUs do you want. So if you have, let's say, heavy, you want to have a heavy user server, heavy performance server, you may want 2 GB or 3 GB, right? Or 4 GB, whatever. I We are going to use 1 GB uh, because that is going to be enough to run Node server, Node.js server. We are not going to run uh, React React server on that. If we had to run React server, it will not be enough to in one GB. But we just want to run Node. Node is very lightweight, and one GB is enough for that. And we are going to use one uh, CPU. Okay, this is the only thing available for free tier. 
no point in scrolling and there are uh, servers with 500 gb as well right there are one with 384 gb and all that we don't want all of that so <clears throat> we just want one gb server one gb ram and one cpu and it is called t2.micro okay this is the only one available for free tier so you want to run this for 12 uh, uh, 12 uh, months and you will not get billed one server for 12 months straight no cost right you can choose that and for key pair we this uh, we have to use this key pair so that we can uh, log into our ssh hold on So uh, this key pair is used to log in into uh, our machine using SSH. Without this, we will not be able to log in. So I'm going to click on create new pair and I'm going to name this PT web 08B demo. Okay, same name and PEM file, that is fine. This will create this file and it will download this file. This is the only time this file is downloaded. Uh, once you create this server and you select this key pair, you will not be able to download these files. So make sure that uh, you know uh, where this file is. So I'm going to call, move this file. I'm going to move this file to this place. This is nothing but uh, encryption key. Okay. Spam files are always encryption key. And yeah. Okay. This is key pair. Once we have selected this, rest of the things we, we can turn a blind eye to. And we want to allow SSH traffic. We want to allow HTTP traffic from internet. So these two options you can select. We want to allow SSH from anywhere or my own IP address. So I can say my IP address, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to delete this uh, server anyway after a few hours. And then for space, you can say that I want eight gigabytes of disk space. Okay. <clears throat> so eight gig, eight gigabytes of disk space is enough. You can have 30 gigabytes of disk space for free tier, but I'm not under free tier. I'm just going to do with eight or I can even do with four. Four gigabytes is also enough. So the, okay, must be at least eight. So it is fine. Okay. So rest of the things, uh, we are done with this. We don't want to go into advanced detail. So we just click on launch instance. Is instance equivalent to number of machines running or cores we decide to give to our uh, remote OS? No, instance is equivalent to one server. Okay, one instance means one server. So we can create multiple servers at the same time. So it is now launching. And if I click on this, you can see that it is uh, under status, it is initializing. Okay, if I remove this filter, now I have two uh, instances. One is personal and this one is for demo. And it is saying initializing. Okay, instance state is running. So once it is once it passes the status checks, then we are going to connect to this. But until then, we can select this and I can show you some information. So there is public IP address. That means uh, we are able to uh, reach this uh, server by its public IP address. So if I copy and paste this, we are not going to see anything. It is not going to return any response because it is not listening for request. No server is running. We have not configured it, but still we can reach this. Okay. And then instance type t2.micro because we selected this one and rest of the things are just fine. Okay. No, we will not get a very big uh, bill amount if we run infinite loop or something. I told you, right? Whatever you do on your server, if uh, uh, this is 
this server is capable of running your code because it has only one gigabyte of RAM. Whatever you do on your server is not going to add any bill, right? This is your machine now. So yeah, you can do anything. We can run only one uh, application in one instance. No, no limit. You can run 30 apps if this, uh, this server is capable of running 30 apps. I don't think we will be able to run 30 apps uh, with, uh, but I think we can do that. No problem. We did not get a domain name. We are not going to get a domain name. We are going to host on this public IP address. Okay. So we are going to use this public IP address as our domain name. That's it. Okay. So with this, I think everything is working. We can now connect to this. So there are more things about this. So for example, security, networking, and all these things. We don't really want to worry about that right now. If you select this, you're going to see a connect button here. If you click on connect button, it is going to show you uh, four uh, methods of connecting. We are going to use SSH client, first of all. Okay. <clears throat> so in that, it says open and SSH client. On Mac, we have SSH is def uh, installed by default. So I am uh, in this project folder, right? Where my uh, PEM file is existing. So if I show you, this file is there. And if I run SSH, then uh, I'm going to see something like this. So Mac comes pre-installed with SSH. Linux also comes pre-installed with SSH. On Windows, rather you have to enable the feature SSH from Windows 10 and Windows 11. This is not by default enabled for you. You will have to enable it, right? So I'm going to say Windows 10 SSH uh, additional feature. And you can uh, follow this guide to uh, to enable SSH on Windows 10 and Windows 11. So I'm going to paste it here in this. SSH on Windows. Once you have SSH working, once you see this type of output, you can uh, think of connecting with your uh, server. Okay. So first we have to locate our private key file. Uh, my private key file is in this folder, in this directory. I am in this directory and it is present here. So for me, I just have to run this command chmod and uh, 400 and name of the file. It is going to change the permission of this file. chmod command, uh, this, file, uh, this command will change the permission on Windows and uh, Linux. But for uh, Windows, you should not have to do this step. Okay, this step should not be necessary. Once we do this, uh, we can run uh, this command. Okay. We can run this command to connect to our e, uh, EC2 machine. And instead of this huge uh, endpoint, this huge uh, endpoint is ec2.apsouth1.compute.aws, we can use uh, the public IP address. Okay. So I'm going to use this public IP address. Uh, this one. Remove uh, HTTP and we use this PEM file to log in to this machine. Without this PEM file, we are not going to be able to log in. Okay. So this is how SSH works. And once I do this, it is going to ask me that the host, this, this host, uh, it is not authentic right now, but it is going to uh, run this. Uh, it is going to start connecting to this. So it has to add this to some file or whatever, right? So it is not uh, known by any other names. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? I say yes. 
and then permanently added this to a file. So next time it is not going to ask me. It is a list of known hosts. That means I, I know which host this is. I am okay connecting to it. Okay. Fine. Once we do this, you can see that my command line completely changes. There is this output. And in this we have, uh, uh, you can see some uh, description that system load is right now 0, 0.0. There are 98 processes running, users logged in zero. And <coughs> we are using 20% uh, of 7.57 gigabytes of disk space. Memory, we are using 20% and all these things. Okay. So yeah, this is the default output. Now it here says Ubuntu at this IP address and we are used, uh, we are logged in as the user Ubuntu, right? Name of the root user is Ubuntu. So with this, we are logged into our EC2 machine. Now, if I type any, any command here, it is going to be executed on our remote server, remote server. It is not going to be executed in our local machine. If I want to exit, I will have to press exit and then I will come back to my machine. This is my terminal. But if I do this, then this is remote server. Okay. Yes, these are stats of uh, our EC2 instance. Okay. So we are going to say ls. Right now there is no file, no folder, whatever. We have, uh, we don't have our code on EC2 machine, which we can change. So I'm going to say localhost, sorry, going to this uh, project, GitHub project. I am going to clone this. My code is committed. I am not committing this one. Uh, rest, the things I need are already committed to this. So git clone, we can clone this repository. Git clone and this one, right? If we do this, okay, I think uh, I should uh, give it a name. So say lectures. So it's cloning into lectures. If I do ls now, you will see there is a folder of lectures. So it this this uh, EC2 machine already has Git and SSH and all these things installed on it. Okay, so we can just copy your code. We can uh, check out the branch that we need. So we want PT Web zero eight PT Web eight B right. This is where our code is. Okay. Uh, I think we have to log, uh, CD into lectures and then check out to this. So we are now, we have switched to this branch that we have been working with. If I do LS, then you can see that we have all the folders here. We have this uh, folder, which is the final folder. So CD into 09 North. Here we have a public folder must be here. Um, okay. Public folder is there, right? Yeah. Uh, do 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 anybody see his public folder? Okay. I have not pushed the changes. Once I post the changes, once I post the changes, I can. Uh, Pull from, okay, pull. So as I'm typing, this is taking some delay. There is a very slight delay. You may not notice it, but there is slight delay. Once I, for each key press, there is some delay. Okay. So git pull origin, pt web 8b. Now we think, I think we should have public folder as well. So this is the public folder and inside this we will uh, we also have the latest uh, config db and everything else so this is our latest code we don't have node modules we have to install node modules 
but if i run npm npm is <coughs> not uh, supported by default okay so we have to install node.js on this uh we have to install node.js on this server by default node.js is not installed so uh, node.js so i'm going to use this guide right and paste the link here as well mm. install node.js on ec2 instance how are we putting files on our machine do you mean this server how are we putting files we just git cloned our repository so we can use git this is a public repository we can clone this repository anywhere yeah okay so uh we we have done all of these parts we have taken our ec2 machine and everything we are logged in now in we are using uh we are going to use nvm nvm is a tool so uh just going back so we are going to use nvm uh to download node.js so this command with this command we will install nvm on our ec2 machine okay and <clears throat> after this we need to activate nvm and i'm going to use this right now once i do this i can run nvm okay so this nvm command is present node version manager we can install multiple versions of node with nvm we don't want to uh, do that we just want a specific version so i'm going to open new tab in the terminal and i'm going to say node version so we'll install this version specifically 16 okay so uh with this i'm going to say nvm and it it gives you uh uses and directions so if we want to install a specific version we can do this we can also uh, so we are going to say nvm install version number 16.15.1 okay or we can just say 16 nvm install 16 it is going to install the latest version of uh, node 16 right now if i do node that's v then we will have node on on our ec2 ec2 machine any version will work but we don't we don't want uh latest version because with uh 16 or uh, some apis can change right this is this this major version as the major version changes some apis can be broken okay that's why we want to have specific we don't want to run in, into any issues and we don't have a code that requires us to run latest node version so we will do with this okay so once we do this i go to lectures go to this folder and then i can say npm install so this npm install is going to download uh download uh dependencies in my uh on my on uh on this download dependencies of this project on my remote server okay and it is going to use uh remote machines internet for this we are just typing commands here don't think that we are using our internet and it is very fast the internet connection for uh, servers is very fast so if uh, you have to download huge files let's say 2 gb or 3 gb it is going to take like not even a minute it is going to take like 30 seconds or so yeah okay <clears throat> so uh, but you should be careful with the network usage as well that i think uh, there is a limit to uh, servers network uses if you use if you cross that you will not be able to connect to your server 
but uh, that that's another point okay once we do this we can start running our node app here right we can start running our node app here but there is one little problem we currently do not have uh we currently do not have env file we need env file in which uh we can have um this in which we can have these uh environment variables okay so i'm just going to copy uh this file using command line okay and for production we are going to use uh, this remote connection url remote db uh, we are not going to host db on our machine because it is just one gb and we don't want to install mongodb on our server we just want to use this uh, cluster of mongodb that we created okay and here instead of mongoose demo i'm going to say blog blogs app okay and uh yeah so i'm going to copy all of this and create a file so i can do that by saying cat uh uh this arrow key and then dot env and then i can paste it and then i can press Control c okay so if I do ls, this file is not going to be visible because all dot files are by default hidden. But if I do ls hyphen a, then you can see there is a dot env file here. And if I do cat dot env, you can see the contents of this file. This is the file. So this is how <coughs> uh, we uh, we have a different e env file for our production applications. And we have a different env file for our uh, development applications okay cat command will not work on uh, windows it will work only on uh, bash okay so you can open git bash there it will work i think <clears throat> so once we do this we can uh, run npm uh, sorry node index and you will see that it says connected to database and server listening on this although server is listening on uh, 3000 it I, I forgot to change it the port number is 3000 okay so let's try to open this uh, instead of using local host we will have to use uh, this IP address okay because now we are not running code on our local machine rather we are running on uh, some uh, IP address okay once we do this uh, say 3000 we are not going to get any response and this is uh, because we have to allow network traffic to reach this machine right how do we do that uh one go, we have to change a setting go to security inside security i mean select your uh, ec2 machine go to security go to this security group setting inside this there is a tab called inbound rules and under that inbound rules you have to <clears throat> you have to sort of open traffic on this port by default uh, when I selected uh, net HTTP and HTTP traffic, this this uh, port number 443 and port number 80, they were opened for network traffic, but we also want to open uh, another port number. Okay, so click on this, select custom TCP, select port number 3000, and say anywhere. Okay, we want to accept connections from anywhere so if i save this right if i save this and if i do a reload this time it is going to work okay so you can also check this it is going to work for you this time it is going to work and i can log in 
there is no user i can sign up then i can log in so this is what okay and if i look at my uh, log uh, if i look at my terminal you will see i will see all the logs so if i go to this is a sample post from the remote uh, server right so if i click submit uh, i have to pass 50 characters limit so once you do this you will see that all the logs right 50 character limit and everything all these logs are coming here so slash post slash uh, api slash post and this gave 500 response this gave 200 response this blog logged in user all these things right these are now uh, working fine okay so i'm going to ask you something so my internet connection is a little uh, unstable right now so i'm going to ask you to open uh, this i'm po pasting this link in chat so you can op all open this and 